misbehaving kind of uh, uh, of behaviors. But uh, um, and there's there's stories in the 1940s and 50s about student riots in the Michigan theater that the students would come up after a football game and uh, demand to see a movie for free and rush the doors, sometimes breaking out the light bulbs in the marquee, uh, and, and rush into the theater and, uh, and demand to see a free movie. And so uh, we understand that happened at the Michigan Theater. We know for sure it happened at the Majestic Theater, which was just a half a block away on Maynard Street. And the Majestic Theater represents one of many theaters, that historic theaters, that used to be in town and have either been torn down to make way for other developments Developments. In the case of the, of the Majestic Theater, it was torn down for the Maynard Street parking structure. Um, or they've been used for other purposes. There was a theater down on Main Street called the Orpheum, which is now the Grazi Restaurant. And right next to that, there was a, a theater called the Worth. And, and right next to the Worth, in the same building where the Worth used to be, is where the Ark currently exists uh, up on the third, second and third floor. Um, and uh, there were theaters on North University, the Arcade Theater. There was a, a grand opera house in Ann Arbor that was built in the 1870s called Whitney, the Whitney Theater. It was also known as Hills Opera House back when it was first built. Um, and there were theaters called the Ray and the Theatorium and uh, all kinds of, of old theaters that used to be here. There was a theater where Arbor Brewing Company is currently that was called the Star Theater that was a Nickelodeon theater back in the, uh, uh, back in, in the 1900s, and they showed short uh, silent films back when Nickelodeon theaters were the primary kind of theaters that were uh, out and available for students in the community to use. Well, the students got a little mad at the theater manager. I don't know if they dumped their coke on somebody's head or if they just uh, uh, generally misbehaved, but they got kind of mad at the theater manager. They, they got up all of their friends one day, marched down to the Star Theater, and completely tore it apart. Uh, and again, this was back in like 1908, uh, about 100 years ago. And uh, the famous Star Theater riot, there are pictures from the newspaper of the era, and it just goes to show you that students have misbehaved their entire history of Ann Arbor. I think that's part of, part of the charm, but it's kind of stressful at the time. So historic theaters capture a particular uh, aspect of a community. They articulate, uh, uh, to a large degree, the aspirations of a community in terms of its cultural view of itself. But they also uh, allow folks to have a, a, a good time in a social kind of setting, which tend to make kind of lifelong memories. And the Michigan Theater, having been around for 80 years, has been the host of many, many good memories, whether it's seeing uh, a film uh, that you see, uh, a contemporary film. The Michigan Theater shows contemporary specialty films, American independent films, uh, foreign films, documentary films, um, or whether it's a classic film. We frequently do classic film uh, presentations uh, uh, throughout the year, but uh, most especially around Christmas time and, and in the summertime. And then there's also lots of live stage shows that have been at the Michigan Theater throughout its history, from starting in 1928 when the theater opened up with Ida Mae Chadwick and her Dizzy Blondes as the uh, vaudeville act that uh, premiered in the theater uh, to folks like uh, Benny Goodman and Nat King Cole um, and uh, performances by Paul Robeson and Jose Ferrar in a very famous production of Othello. Uh, Zazu Pitts, who some of you might know as a movie actress and a Broadway actress. Helen Hayes, uh, the great lady of uh, American theater, performed here. Uh, in a play called The Corn is Green. And even uh, just yesterday, Brian Wilson, the great artistic genius of the Beach Boys, gave a concert earlier this week. Joan Baez uh, did a concert here at the Michigan Theater later this week. The Ann Arbor Symphony is going to do one of their wonderful concerts here at the Michigan Theater. So whether it's a film or a live on stage show, there's lots that you can uh, enjoy at the Michigan Theater and memories that can be made that will last a lifetime. And that's really what cultural facilities uh, do. They provide lifelong memories and they also stimulate the community's creativity. Ann Arbor is very, very fortunate to uh, have the type of community that would value an institution, an organization, and historic 
piece of architecture like the Michigan Theater. And uh, I'm so grateful that this is the kind of community where people are willing to volunteer their time, volunteer their dollars, and uh, come out to cultural programs as frequently as they do. So thank you, Ann Arbor Area Community, for your support of the many things that uh, take place in this town, but most particularly the Michigan Theater. Well, we're uh, going to do some shots here from the back row of the balcony. And um, one of our other producers said that she has very fond memories of the back row of the balcony. But I, 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 don't, I don't know that we need any more detail than that. But the, um, the movie palace, which was an American architectural style of the 1920s, uh, is an important uh, architectural movement in the United States. And movie palaces tend to fall into two general categories. One is the atmospheric theater, which was usually replicating an outdoor setting, like a Spanish courtyard or a Japanese garden or a, or a Chinese garden. Um, and then there was the movie palaces that uh, used a lot of the decorative techniques of 18th century European opera houses. And that's what the Michigan Theater is like. It, uh, it uses a lot of the decorative motifs of an 18th century movie palace, like the Paris Opera or the Vienna Staatsoper. Except a movie palace, an American 1920s era movie palace, is a modern steel and concrete building. And so all of the things that in a European opera house would have been structural, things like columns and arches, in a movie palace are usually more fantastic. They're, uh, uh, they're, they're, they're not structural. Because the, the structure is, again, this steel and concrete that's hidden behind all of the plaster work. So it allowed them to 